Hey, good morning YouTube and welcome to the vlog. My name is Jordan from JP Reptiles. So today we've got an absolutely amazing adventure for you guys. This weekend is the Tinley Park Reptile Expo, the spring show here in Chicago, Illinois. And man, what an amazing show it's been so far. Today's actually day two. I was here yesterday. I tried to get the camera out and do some filming, but man, it was so jam packed that I could not get any footage. And it just really shows to you guys how insane the reptile industry is getting and how busy it's getting. So we've got a lot of really awesome breeders here today. We've got some amazing people, some amazing animals. We're gonna get some lots of footage and show you guys some cool stuff. So let's get inside. Let's try to get past this lineup and show you guys what's going on down here at the Tinley Park Reptile Expo. place is absolutely insane. Check out the huge lineup behind me. There's tons of people here lining up. It's hard to walk in there. It's shoulder to shoulder. Like I said, usually this one is a smaller of the two Tinley shows. For some reason, this spring is absolutely insane. It's lined up all the way to the back. There's people outside coming in. All right guys, so we finally made it inside the show. We're gonna start off right now before it gets too jam-packed in here. It's still early in the morning, but I, at least we can walk around and see what's going on. Because I, like I said, yesterday it was just so incredibly busy. It was almost impossible to get the camera out and do some filming for you guys. So great opportunity to get started. So let's see who's here and get the show on the road. Check this out. I'm here with Jimmy and Rose from House of Ig. Yep. And this is Abe? Yes. It is. Abe, a 24 pound massive green iguana? Correct. Correct. I have never seen a green iguana of this size. So tell us, is this normal? Do they always get this big? No, they don't. So Abe is seven. He is a little abnormally large for his size. He is about 24 pounds. Is that really? because he has an insane diet or is he just kind um, of? It's A lot of it is food, a lot of it is also genetics. Genetics. Yeah. yeah, so he's about 21 inches from nose to vent. We do heat, feed him a very, very diet. They're vegetarian only. So lots of fruits and vegetables, collard greens, mustard greens, dandelion. These guys can make great pets. They are not beginner pets. They need a lot of space. They need a lot of fresh food. They do have special lighting and humidity requirements. They're not all this docile. Abe has actually been with us for a number of years. And uh, we actually do a lot to bring him out in public and get him used to human interaction. So basically what you're trying to say is because he is super docile does not necessarily mean that all iguanas are gonna stay this tame. They will not, just like people. They all have their individual personalities. He just happens Whoa. to be chill. We have a one-year-old at home. Both yeah, Jimmy and I think twice about opening his enclosure because he is a little demon. So let me ask you this. For the regular hobbyist who doesn't have any experience with iguanas, great first pets or no? I would say no. Okay, um, so you need I, a little bit of experience, need some? Yes. I can definitely say that his colors are absolutely stunning. He's a beautiful animal. He is. I really appreciate the time that you guys took with us today. And is there anywhere, like a website or anything, my followers can go check out your page? Uh, if you guys want to check us out, we're on Facebook. It's House of Ig and <laughs> www.houseofig.com. Awesome. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you. Again, huge green iguana. And make sure, guys, if you're going to go out and buy one, that you do your proper research because absolutely. this is potentially how big this animal is going to get. All right, guys, you guys want to see something really cool? Check it out. We got Dave Kaufman in the background. He's actually filming a vlog right now. He's got a monstrous reticulated python in his hand. Let's check that out. Oh my God, I have an audience. This is, okay, here we go, here we go. All right, here. We got it, we got it, we got it. All right, Rattlers, so here is contestant number one for the March 2019 Tinley Park Rattle On Awards. This is a monster cow retic owned by JK Reptiles. This guy is huge and he's a little hard to handle, but you know what, I'm a big guy and this is a big snake and therefore I'm a big tree. That is so cool guys, that is a huge snake. I absolutely love the cow reticulated pythons. Unfortunately I don't have the space at home to take care of one, but if you do, any of you guys have retics, I think they're absolutely beautiful and majestic. So let's keep going, let's see who else is here. Got a lot of stuff to show you guys. The show is already starting to pack in again and it looks like it's gonna be another huge day just like it was yesterday. So let's go on to some other tables and show you guys some other really cool animals. So 
I just ran into Daniel Allison from Constriction Addiction, legendary man himself. He's got some absolutely incredible animals and he wants to show off a couple of animals that he's got here, including a world's first. So Dan, what do you've got to show us for the first snake? Well, right here we've got the uh, Mystic Skelis that we produced last season. This animal has been a controversial project for us, but it's definitely one that I'm kind of partial to. So it's very interesting you talk about the care requirements. So definitely you would say that this is not your typical ball python. You do certain things you need to do in order to make sure that this snake either sheds out properly or, or gets taken care of. So do you mind explaining to us a little bit of what that is? Yes. So with this animal, this animal, I call it a high maintenance animal. This animal has to be checked on every single day. You want to keep it on paper towels. You definitely don't want a dry water bowl or the animal tipping the water bowl over. You don't want it to sit in water. So let me ask you this. So when you say that the animal can't sit on water, why is that? What would happen to the animal? Well, what happens is it's like if uh, you go to the swimming pool or you take a bath too long, what happens is the skin gets really wrinkly, pruny, and it tears very, very easy. So you oh, wow. just have to be very careful with these animals. You wouldn't recommend this basically for a brand new hobby that's getting out into the ball python world? Absolutely not. I, this, is for some, this is for someone that has experience with ball pythons, very good with husbandry and understands the ball python and, and its care requirements. There you have it guys, that's the scaleless project. Again, for experienced breeders only, there's special care requirements because the animals are delicate. So make sure you do your research. If you guys wanna get into the project, reach out to the breeders who you would buy from. Make sure you get all the information possible because you wanna make sure that that animal gets the best quality of life when it's in your collection. So let's check out a couple other cool snakes here at Constriction Addiction. All right, Dan, so this one kind of really took my breath away. So this is a world's first. You're the first person in the world to make this snake and it's really awesome. So this is a Super Vanilla Pie. A Super Vanilla Pie. Guys, check this snake out. This is, this was a, this was a surprise to me. I did not expect it to color up the way it has, uh, almost in an orange dream way, but the head on it is just phenomenal. I was very, very pleased with the results. Um, I can't wait to see what we can do with this in the future. So Dan, let me ask you, what's the next step for a Super Vanilla Pie? What would you like to see in this project? You know, fire, orange dream, uh, yellow belly. I think there's a lot inchy. I think there's a lot, a lot we can do with this animal. I mean, are you afraid that adding fire in it would cause pattern to disappear, or do you think the vanilla is going to counteract that and keep the pattern on the snake? I think it's very possible that with fire, the you know, the, the vanilla cream pod, it's already been created. It will take away a lot of the pattern, but we can overcorrect that with inchy and bring some of that pattern back. Super Vanilla OD Yellow Belly Inchy Pod is just probably going to be just insane, especially with the head. All right, Dan, so this snake is absolutely mind-blowing. Go ahead and tell us who is the person that bought that snake. You are. JP Reptiles, that's right, guys. Check this out. This is a... Black Pastel Yellow Belly Ultra Mel at Hypo. Wow, Black Pastel Yellow Belly Ultra Mel, 100% Het Hypo. Honestly, Dan, I'm telling you, I had the intentions of coming to the show this weekend, and I was specifically looking for an Ultra Mel project, and it just thing just caught the corner of my eye when I walked by our booth, and I was like, it wasn't even for sale at first, right? No, nope, wasn't even for sale. Wasn't even for sale. I've had, I probably turned about six people down on it before you come by. And, That's amazing. Uh, we, you know. Well, Dan, all I can say is I'm super, super uh, appreciative of you allowing me to get this snake into my collection. I got some big plans for it. I'm also going to be relying on you for some uh, some future ideas because I know you are uh, heavily invested in the Ultramel project. Absolutely. And would you agree with what a lot of breeders are saying that Ultramel is kind of a sleeper gene right now? That there's a lot of potential there? I think that it's been overlooked a lot uh, over the last decade. I think it's been kind of tossed to the side like a lot of these other genes that we have seen. But it's definitely making a comeback now. I think it's on the rise in a big way. So guys, you heard that from the man himself. Get yourself some Ultramel because this project is starting to take off and I can't wait to get this one plugged in. So Dan, thank you so much. Absolutely. Big handshake thank on you, camera. Man. Guys, go down in the description, check out Constriction Addiction. Daniel Allison, legendary man himself.
right, guys, so look who I just ran into. This is Sunny from Serpentech, huge supporter of mine. I'm so happy to have finally met you in person here at Tinley Park. He just picked up a brand new animal from Mike Breezy at Breezy Reptiles. Absolutely stunning snake. Why don't you tell us a little bit about what it is? So, this is a granite hidden gene woma yellow belly fader ghost. So what's the fader? I, I don't really have experience with the fader. Tell us a little bit about that. So the fader gene, a lot of people debate its existence, um, but an easy way to tell if it's there is if you look closely on the head stamp of this snake, you can see a butterfly pattern, and that's a key indicator for the fader gene. So this is a visual hypo? Yes, this and is a visual hypo male. And so, oh, it's a male, awesome. So you must have some awesome females already ready to go on oh, the yeah. show. Oh yeah, we got OD Enchi head hypo, GHI trick head hypo, we're ready to get rolling. Hypo is a very underrated gene in our opinion. So tell us, what is best case scenario, what are you hoping to make with this? Ideally, we're gonna hit a hidden gene Woma, yellow belly, granite, fader, orange dream, Enchi, ghost. Oh my God, I don't even wanna ask you what the odds would be on getting a snake like that. Impossible. <laughs> impossible. <laughs> Nothing is impossible. You're definitely going to be watching your channel. You've got some great stuff. Sunny, it was a pleasure meeting you. Thank you so much. I'm really happy that you got something. Did you come here specifically looking for this animal? I walked by three times and I knew if I came back again and it was sold, I would regret it forever. So I got there and immediately bought the snake. So there you go, guys. If you guys are walking by tables down here and you want to think about it, don't take the time. If you love it and it catches your eye, grab it because there are so many people here and it doesn't take long for snakes to disappear, right? It'll be gone like that. Yeah, it's already happened to me already this morning. Yep. Literally five minutes gone. So I'm so happy you got it. Thanks so much for being in the video and we'll make sure guys go follow him. His Instagram links will be down in the description below. I just ran into Dave from RL Exotics. What's a show down here in Tinley without RL Exotics? You guys got some absolutely incredible animals and he's got a really awesome project called the Campfire Project. We've got a couple of brand new worlds first. I guess this is the first time you've shown them off? Um, I, we had this one, the pinstripe version at Tinley last time, but okay. it just hatched that week, so it didn't start coloring up yet. Awesome, so, so these snakes are mind blowing. So Dave, please start with the first one. Tell us what it is, and I'm guessing there's a little bit of a mystery gene that we're gonna keep you guys in suspense for, and uh, you're gonna be releasing that information down Yeah, we'll tell everybody this year. Okay, yeah. cool, so show us what we got. All right, so um, first one, this is gonna be the campfire. The nickname for this project came from Ben Rennick. He had an animal that he produced. It was a three gene combo. First one he labeled it for what it was. The second one, he called it the campfire. And I thought it was a really unique name for the animal. I think it's actually kind of perfect. So with any combos that we make, let's start with these three base genes. As long as it's got the nice orange color, we're gonna keep that campfire theme name going. So we have wildfires. Ben had one he called the toasted marshmallow when you put spider in it. We had the bonfire, which a lot of people have seen. And we got a couple other ones on the table that actually we got to figure out a good name for. So what's really interesting about these genes is I automatically assumed that there was orange dream in these snakes, but you've confirmed that there is no orange no. dream in this whatsoever. No, I haven't done orange dream yet. Um, you know, we got a lot of plans for it this year, but it's going to be putting a pattern in and taking a pattern out, putting a new color in like yellow belly and kind of mess around and see what happens. So it's really interesting the fact that you're able to really pull out these intense oranges without utilizing an orange dream. So imagine if you did add orange oh, dream. It could be very interesting. I talked to Ozzy about it for a moment when he came by the table on Friday and you know, it's in like we said, there's Inchi and Calico, which are two of the genes and orange is coming from another third gene, which we all have in our collection. But putting orange dream in it or even making the super inchy form, super orange dream form in the future. This sounds kind of cocky, but when you kind of look at this campfire right here, you think, how can you really make it better? Just because it's kind of perfect. But we're going to tease around with it. Um, we have a lot of clutches where you have to miss on a lot of combinations to hit this just right. Because a lot of the other things in these clutches are coming out brown and drab and they just don't have the look. It's just got to be perfect. So let me ask you this, maybe a little bit of insight. Where are you going to take the project from here? What would you like to do with it? Um, well, I kind of want to do every pattern at least once. So spot nose in, spot nose out, leopard in, leopard out. Um, leopard does a really good job of pulling out the oranges, right? Leopard could be interesting. These are absolutely beautiful snakes. Guys, make sure you go and fo follow RL Exotics. Links will be down in the description below. He's got some awesome stuff. Uh, we'll be sure to see you guys down here again at the next Tinley Show in October. We'll miss it. All right, thank you so much, man. Yeah.